What even is the dark side of Japan? Some made up marketing nonsense? Well, no, it's actually a bit of a step change for Yamaha. When they made that decision 10 years ago to bring out the first MT-09, they were saying, we're not playing fair anymore. We're not gonna go straight down the well-trodden path of the grown-up, sensible Japanese manufacturer. We're gonna make stuff that's wild, the stuff that does skids and wheelies and puts a smile on your face. Stuff to battle the things that European manufacturers are doing already. 10 years on, the latest MT-09 is no exception. It's still an absolute riot of a bike, but with a whole host of updates to make it a little bit more polished and a little bit better for everyone to ride. So what have they changed? Well, actually tons. It might look like a bit of a styling makeover job, but the underneath engineering of this bike, everything has been looked at and just tweaked slightly. There's no massive step change, but lots of little improvements that make the whole package a nicer, easier, and more enjoyable thing to ride. From changes to the front suspension to make the fork stiffer, from changes to your body position to give you more feel on the front tire, through to things like the new quick shifter system that's incredible, and the new switch gear and dash that is about a light year ahead of the old stuff. Yamaha has looked at everything and really tried to make sure that the MT-09 feels like a really high quality product and is just better to use in day-to-day -day circumstances. There's loads and loads of bits there that the Japanese engineers are very, very happy with and really keen for us to try out. But ultimately, the point of an MT-09 is to put a smile on your face. So we went out and hit the roads in Lanzarote to see just how big that smile was on this latest generation. <laughs> MT-09 is 10 years old. 10? That's like having a mate whose kid you can remember being born and then all of a sudden he tells you that kid's off to high school. <laughs> Makes me feel old. But since that first MT-09 came out, which actually kind of changed the face of Yamaha's, Yamaha's street bikes, you know, they were always before that a bit safe. And dare I say it, a bit boring and definitely a little bit expensive. When they kind of rethought themselves and bought out the, the dark side of Japan thing, they embraced the sort of wild side, the street culture, the more underground culture of Japan, and bought with it some bikes that were more exciting, a little bit more risky, a little bit more stunty, and bang on the money, whereas Yamaha's have been too expensive for a fair while. That kick-started the MT series, and since then it has been super successful. They've built over 200,000 MT-09s, and they're a really popular bike, along with the MT-07, and of course the MT-10, and the MT-125, and the MT-03, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, all the other MTs you can buy. But for me, the 9 is the OG, and it's the absolute sweet spot. It's the right amount of power, the right amount of weight, the right amount of crazy. It's such a good bike for so many reasons not least that triple cylinder engine. Triumph used it to good effect for so long. Can't blame Yamaha for jumping on the bandwagon and giving you something that gives you that halfway house between the current crop of parallel twins that is so popular that have their highs and lows. But this is more compact and more characterful than your, your across the frame four cylinder. It, it, is a, it is a Goldilocks engine in a Goldilocks bike. Now out on the road, the MT-09 performed like an MT-09 does. Every time you weren't looking, it was trying to do wheelies, and every time you were looking, it wanted to go razzing through the gears, making that awesome triple cylinder hop. One of the things they've changed is they've put vents in the top of the airbox that I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna talk about because they're, they called them acoustic mesh. Basically, they opened up the top of the airbox so you get a bit more noise from the engine. Really, really nice feature, makes it sound incredible. And actually, if you shift right at the red line with the quick shifter, you get this really wonderful like crack, strange noise. 
Once you've done it once, you can't stop doing it. You end up just rattling through the gears, waiting for that hot, like evil crackle noise that comes from the top of the airbox. It's a properly cool thing. And again, something completely childish that 10 years ago, Yamaha probably wouldn't have done. Now, in terms of the riding dynamics of this bike, we rode a mixture of kind of rough single track roads, some fast sweeping stuff, and then some completely un-British, perfect billiard ball smooth sweeping section. On some of the bumpier bits, I found that actually the new bike does give you lots of confidence in the front end, even on the dusty gravelly corners. I had lots of feel and lots of confidence to push the front tire through the corners. A couple of times on sort of G out sections in corners, I found the rear shock a little bit soft. Maybe a up in the preload would help that, but it never got out of shape and the bike never pitched more than once. It just had one little pump on the shock, touched the foot peg and then carried on. And that then flip side of that on the bumpier roads, on the single track stuff, the bike did feel pretty compliant. It wasn't harsh or rattly. So you could then enjoy those roads rather than just clinging onto the handlebars and surviving them. Now in between all this charging between corners, I had plenty of time to fiddle around with the new switch gear, learn the, the new indicator button, which I don't know why my stupid brain took so long to figure out how to operate that, but once I figured it out, it was pretty sensible. But being able to change through the modes and now having proper maps on the dash, made the bike so much better in normal riding. You know, you can imagine getting up on a Sunday. Rah, rah, rah. That map on the dash thing, I've ridden a couple other bikes with it. It is kind of a game changer because instead of having GPSs and brackets and things bolted to your bars, you just pair your bike to the phone, set a route to wherever you want to go and ride. All the information's on the dash, all the control is on the handlebar. You don't have to faff around with extra things and trying to press buttons with a gloved hand. I love that blown my mind it's taken us this long for it to be a normal thing but thankfully the MT-09 is now kind of leading the way in the middleweight segment in this class for that sort of technology. Since that first one the MT has in some ways grown up a bit much like we were saying about the the Duke 990 the other week you know this thing has got more refined it's actually lost some of the head shaky wobbliness that the original one had it's got a slightly more canted forward of riding position they've done that again for this 2024 one it's just moved your feet up and back a bit your handlebars closer but lower and doing those changes they've tried to make it a little bit more street bike roadster naked sports bikey so you get a bit more feel on the front it's all based on feedback that they were asked for you got an adjustable fork now still fairly basic shock on it but they've just tried to smooth off the edges that made the mt09 a little bit hard work at times and every generation they've done that. And this 2024 one is no exception. One thing I was, yeah, a little bit sad about, despite the fact that you can customize all the different modes, you can change the throttle maps, you can change the traction control settings, wheelie settings, you can turn all the traction control and wheelie control off. You can't put the ABS into a supermoto mode or switch the rear ABS off. Now, is that a problem for you? Probably not. For me, it was annoying. I love skidding the bike on a back brake and drifting it, and you can't do that on this one. I have it on good authority that when the SP comes out, that feature will be included. So for the Hooligan Supermoto gang out there, hold on to your pennies for a few more months. You're gonna want the one with the SP on the end. Now at the end of a long day riding, we spent a lot of time in the saddle. MT09, as always, put a massive smile on everyone's face. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> It's a really, really flexible engine, and that combined with a new quick shifter mean that riding it at low speed, medium speed, or flat out, it's really, really easy to ride. Now this bike's competitors, a lot of them are parallel twins, and this definitely has some distinct advantages over a parallel twin setup. It sounds pretty cool for a start, but you find you can use the gears for longer. It's really, really smooth fueling right off the bottom. It's super clean, there's no shudders or jerks, but then when you want to wind it open throughout a straight, you can just let it sing all the way up to the red line. You get that little top end rush as well, and then roll it back off again. You find you spend less effort up and down the box and just rolling on, letting the engine brake and do the work. Now, some people prefer the rattling up and down the gears feeling. For me, on a long swooping A road, this engine and all that flexibility, it just makes for a really smooth, really enjoyable ride. Now, this year, Yamaha's running a MT tour, so there'll be a bunch of MT09s touring Europe. If you want to get a, a test ride on one or have a sea of one in the flesh, check out the MT tour because that's going to be a really good way if you want to see if what I say matches what you feel, jump on one of these and get out for a spin. But for now, let's high five Yamaha for 10 years of the MT09 and they've managed to make it more rideable, more fun, more refined than ever without losing any of that original chaos that the first bike had. Good job, Yamaha. Mm -hmm.